The next part that we want to create is the centre hub. So let's first of all clear some of the clutter out of the way. So we're going to turn off the caliper, we're also going to turn off the rim and we can zoom into the middle. So the centre curves are all of these purple curves in the centre there. And then there's a bolt hole as well that sits in, inside there. Let's start off with the, the back surface. So if we pick this curve here, we might think, well, we'll revolve that because obviously it's a revolve. And in fact, we've got the pivot point in exactly the right place. So we could then revolve that. The problem with that is if I revolve that surface, you notice it's, for one thing, it's very high degree. It's degree seven. Degree one across that way is no problem at all. But all the CVs here congregate on one point. So we've got a zero length edge. In other words, a triangular surface, which is something we never want. Plus, it's also a completely flat surface. So really, we don't, we don't want anything more than a degree one by one. So let's undo that. So instead of using revolve for that particular surface, what we'll do instead is use plane. So if we double click on there, with plane we can say the degree is 1. And we hit, hit go. Now I'm going to drag that plane down to the end of this curve by using Control alt and just sliding it down there. So it's onto the end of that curve. But it's not in the right orientation. What we need to do is rotate it around the x-axis. So let's just remind ourselves, so there's the x-axis. So x is red, so RGB always corresponds to x, y, z, therefore red is x. And to rotate it around the x-axis, so there's our x-axis there, we click on the dotted line there, the dotted red line. Click on that, and you can see the axis gets highlighted as well. And if we look up here in the user prompt, it says enter the rotation angle. So it's looking for, in this case, if I click in there, it's looking for 90 degrees. So that gives us a surface now that forms the back of the center hub. We need to make it bigger uh, than the where this curve comes in, otherwise it's not going to be large enough. So we can scale it here by clicking on the square at the end, click on the square in the middle, and then scale it up. So it's scaling equally in all directions, so that when we look on this, in this left view, you can see it's perfectly symmetric about the axis of the wheel, which is exactly what we want. We could probably make that a little bit smaller. We don't want to make it too large, but it, it needs to clear that point there so that when we revolve that back, we can then we can then trim our back surface out. So that's the back surface. On the front surface, we've, we can do exactly the same thing. So we've got a flat area here. So instead of doing a revolve, we're going to use plane on that one. But before we do that, we need to check that that curve pivot point is in the right place, which it is. And so we can do our plane. So again, we're going to pick on go there and slide that down there. Rotate it about X. So tab into the, if you tab into that field, you don't have to go up there. So tabbing into there makes it active. And then I can type in 90 and that rotates that surface into the right orientation. Again, if we want to scale that, click on the box on one end, click on the center one, and then we can scale that equally in all directions. We want to make it just a bit bigger than the recess itself, which is just there. Now the other two curves that we've got, we've got that one and that one, they will be revolves. So we need to, we could group them together, but it's hardly worth while when there's only two of them. So if I pick that curve, you can see the pivot points in the wrong place. So I'm going to move the pivot point. I'll just move it onto the end of this curve here. So we know that that is a pivot point that's on the y-axis. And if we want to check that out, we can go into Windows Information window. Pivot point there, it says rotate pivot. So in X, it's zero. In Z, it's zero. Y has a value, but that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter what that value is. It just means that if X and Z are zero, then it must lie along the Y axis. And that's all we need to know. So it's arbitrary where we pick that. It can be at zero, zero, zero if you want to, or at some arbitrary point along the Y axis, and the rotate will be fine. So let's revolve that. Now we're going for five spokes. So much like our um, rim, we want to create a 72 degree angle here, 
which is what we've got, 72 degrees, one segment, degree 7 still, because we know that gives us accurate, accurate circular shapes, and we're rotating it about the y-axis. The local axis just means it's going to be about the pivot point, as before. So if I press next, um, that curve may well not have the right pivot point, so let's just check that first. So let's pick that, and sure enough it hasn't. So we gain pick move pivot, and I'm going to use Control and Alt just to slide it down the end of that line, make sure it's at the end of that line there, so it's on the y-axis again. And then if we revolve, that's going to be going around at that angle. Now we're going to leave that where it is, unlike on the rim where we moved it back 36 degrees, we're going to leave that where it is because what we want to do is when we create the bolt hole, we want to move the bolt hole so it's it's halfway round that surface so that it doesn't clash with the bottom of the spoke. It'll just make it easier for this model for the purpose of the exercise, otherwise we might have uh, fillets on the bottom of the spoke and fillets around the bolt hole which clash into each other and although that is perfectly possible it's something we probably want to avoid at the moment for this exercise it just makes it overly complicated.